Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. This is Tim Penhay. He, is, he works for Canonical. He works on Launchpad. He is the team lead for the code team. And he's a very friendly and outgoing guy who is not wearing any shoes. Thank you. Shoes are optional. Um, thank you, Aaron. That was great. <laughs> I have my new toy, so I don't have to be tethered to my laptop. Um, I actually submitted two talks to the proposal, or to the LCA team. Um, this was the other one, which I actually thought would have been the more interesting talk. Um, but in their infinite wisdom, they decided to choose this one. So I wanted to start off assuming not a lot from people. So I thought, well, we'll start off really easy. So what is a code review? Um, normally, it involves one or more other people looking at the code you've produced to make sure it does things right. So it, it makes sure that it actually does solve the problem. That's a very key thing that we want to make sure. And it makes sure often that it's solved in the right way. Um, a lot of places have coding standards. Um, I've just started looking at the Drizzle project um, as, of Monday, uh, as of the Wednesday tutorial. And their coding guidelines make me want to weep. However, they are being enforced through reviews and it is agreed upon. So until I can hold enough weight to change the coding standards, I'll just follow them. Um, and for example, we use PEP8 mostly PEP8 coding standards for a launch pad. And um, a not a very good review comment is PEP8, full stop. Um, I've had that a number of times when I first learning and then had to run away and read it. Um, and also, you want to make sure that the, the design, and this sort of fits in, I guess, to the problems solved in the right way. There are different types of code, re code reviews. We have peer reviews. Um, now, I think that a lot of people that are doing peer reviews might actually think they're doing the next type, um, where you have someone with a lot more skill helping someone who has less skill become better at doing what they're doing. Um, there's another type of review as well, which is sort of like a gatekeeper review. This is the person that is not necessarily going to be checking the, the content of what you do, but they're going to be the gatekeeper to a trunk branch. Um, for example, we actually, just on the Drizzle project as well, there's um, Brian Acker, who is effectively the gatekeeper. Nothing gets past him if he doesn't like it. This is an interesting one. There's another thing is, why do we do code reviews? How many people here are not familiar with this website? You can go and have a look later. Um, how many people enjoy reading this website? How many people think that what they see on here is really hilarious and unfortunately all too true? Now, I think a lot of what we see here is our own fault as a culture. That we are, I mean, obviously, what people are writing that gets posted up here is really weird code. When they wrote it, they thought they were doing something good. They thought they were doing something useful. They thought they were doing something meaningful. And for some reason or other, it didn't get checked. Or someone thought, oh, this is a good joke, we'll let them commit it to trunk. Um, but a lot of it's our fault. So we need to get better as an industry and as a group to review these sort of things. So we, and particularly for the previous slide, we want to educate the new developers. We want to let them know that there are different ways of doing things. Um, I've just. I was looking at one of the interesting things they had there just the other day for um, creating an array of months. Um, it was horrible. I'm sure someone, when they created it, thought it was a good idea, but um, it was obviously not reviewed. Um, typos is one that gets caught a lot for me. Um, my spelling isn't great, and I don't have a spell checker enabled in my code browser and my code editor. Um, and also, thinkos, another one of my favorite words, where You've just thought something incorrectly when you thought you had it right, but obviously you didn't. Um, consistent looking code comes back to doing code reviews um, or to the coding standards. A lot of times I have been involved in projects where the code is not consistent at all. Obviously, the people that have come in have 
just applied their own styles. And a common one that people end up saying is, if you're editing a new file, follow the coding standard of whatever is there. At least you won't make it worse. Um, and don't go and change the entire file to your preferred coding standard on indentation and brace position. Um, knowledge transfer. I've kept this one separately from educating the developers because while it's similar, there are consistent things. So there's education. A developer can often be teaching them the basics, whereas knowledge transfer can be having, when you have in-depth understanding of the semantics or meaning of part of the system, and you're wanting to share that with other people so you don't have red bus syndrome, which is where if you get taken out by a bus, the company's stuffed. Um, also, it can help catch bugs early. Not always. I mean, as evident by the number of bugs we have filed against Launchpad, we're obviously not catching everything. Um, but it does allow you to catch some things early. Now, you need to get started with them. And it is difficult to start doing code reviews if you are not in a culture that already does them. Um, it was canonical where I work now is one of the first places where every single thing was code reviewed. Um, and it hurt to start because when you're starting and you're not used to it, you feel like you're being attacked personally. You feel like even though they might say this piece of code's wrong, you feel like they're saying, you're stupid, you did it wrong. And it's, you need to be able to step back, you need to be able to check your ego and say, well, actually, they, if they're doing the code review as well, they are saying the code is wrong, not you're stupid. Some people do do the you're stupid ones, but uh, this talk is not about how to do a good code review. That's another whole talk all in itself. So I thought since this one is a bit about Launchpad, I suppose it would be to get to Launchpad at some stage. For those of you that are not familiar with Launchpad, this is what the home page looks like. It's incredibly busy. Um, it's at launchpad.net, which I don't think I ever wrote anywhere. But that's it. So we use Bazaar. Launchpad uses Bazaar as a distributed revision control of choice. Um, and we support other revision control systems, CVS, Subversion, Git, and Mercurial through what we call our code import service, which is more than just an import, it is, it will mirror the foreign branch. So as someone makes extra commits on the Git branch on GitHub, we have our process will notice that, update it, commit it into the bizarre revision, and make it available on Launchpad. Um, and with the way in which, since we have a distributed revision control system, the accepted way of doing development is to use feature branches. Feature branches where every bug fix or feature you're wanting to create, you create in a separate branch. And then you make that available on Launchpad. So the one slide that'll tell you how to get everything working on Launchpad. Firstly, you need to go to Launchpad and get a Launchpad login. Just as out of interest, how many people here do not have a Launchpad login? OK, not as many as I thought there could be. Um, it's relatively painless. And if you ever want to file a bug against Ubuntu, you'll have to do it anyway. Um, now, you need to have an SSH key. When, before I started Canonical, I didn't have an SSH key. I didn't have a GPG key. I didn't have any of the stuff that was just weird. I worked in a bank. We don't need those things. <laughs> so I had to create myself an SSH key. I had to upload it to key servers. I had to tell Launchpad what the public bits were and to remember not to tell anyone else what the private bits were. Um, now, obviously, if you're going to use Bazaar, you need to install the Bazaar program. Um, please use version 2.0 or greater. It is much better. Um, Bazaar 2.0 was released about five months ago-ish. So it should be available for almost everything. Um, now, and to start off, you need to tell Bazaar who you are with this very simple command. Um, which is actually a question to Bazaar, and if it doesn't know, it'll say, I don't know who you are. Um, but the useful thing is what you write in here is what it will sign your commits with. Um, ideally, you want it to have both your name and an email address. Um, the reason that was given to me was so when someone finds what you've done wrong, they can get in touch with you, which I thought was kind of weird. But Launchpad actually uses that email to be able to tie the commits to your Launchpad account and give you Karma. Karma is like this little score thing we have in Launchpad. 
people try and get as much as possible. Now, Launchpad LP login is to tell Bazaar your Launchpad ID. This allows us to talk to Launchpad in a more efficient manner using a smart server instead of grabbing things over HTTP, which is slower. Um, now you want to do BZR branch to get something to hack on. Um, you want to obviously commit, do some fixes, and then to push it back up to Launchpad. And since this isn't a bizarre tutorial, I'm not going to tell you how to do that either. Once you have a branch on Launchpad, you'll have a page that looks something like this. Um, and to initiate the code review process, you want to propose it for merging, which is this wee link here. And now the laser pointer, it's so cool. Okay, so this is a branch page. It represents a feature branch in Launchpad. Um, it was created by me. It's my branch. It's on the Launchpad project, which is also shown up here. And this is my name here. And this tells other people how to grab that branch. Um, LP is a nice short name that we expand under the cover so you never have to see it into bzr plus ssh colon slash slash username at bizarre.launchpad.net because that's a bit of a mouthful. So you click on this button and you'll see a screen that looks a bit like this. So when you're proposing a branch for merging, you're effectively saying, I would like this code to land on this branch. I would like it to be merged into this branch, and the default one that we'll choose for you is the development focus. So up here we have the one that's chosen will be the main branch for Launchpad. Um, it'll also give you radio buttons for every other branch that you've previously proposed to. Um, in my case, we have our normal develop branch, which is that one, and our production development branch, which is when we have release critical things that we have to get out now. Um, and you can choose something else, but most of the time you'll end up targeting the development focus. And we have a space for you to write what you've done, because this is what ends up getting sent out, because if you don't tell people what you've done, you basically say, oh, I've done some code, please land it, and you don't tell them what it does, it's not very useful. Please write something explanatory in here. Don't say, I fixed bug 26. I'm not listening. You have a question, you can ask at the end, like everybody else. So the thing is to write something meaningful. Preferably, I fixed this bug, and I fixed it in this way, and here's how you test it, because we wrote unit tests. OK, once you've filled in that form, what happens next? Well, it will create this thing under the covers and take you to a page that represents this proposal to merge. It will generate a job in the background that will go away and work out what the differences are between, or what the merge would look like. So um, this was a bit of a controversial thing that we decided is what is the diff that we're actually going to show you. And in the end, we came down to say, well, the diff we're going to show you is what would actually happen if you merged your branch into the one you asked, which was the development focus. So if they did a merge, this is the diff they would see. So this is what we want to have a look at. So we have a server-side process runs away, works out what that diff is, and then sends off an email. And the email gets sent to all of the branch subscribers, and the diff is attached to the email. And this is the page you'll be taken to. So what we have here is a little bit of summary information saying, I reckon I want to put this branch into this branch. The diff's this big. I've asked the Drizzle developers to do it. Oh, this is what I did yesterday. This was my Drizzle hacking session. Um, all of these people got an email saying that I've just done some Drizzle hacking, and I want to merge this in. Um, here's my comment, because they have a, their own string class in C++, and we all know that's not good. Um, and we have this box to add a comment. And since the page is so big, I split it over two. Um, and it has the diff at the bottom. And this is the unmerged revision. It's one revision that says I added some string functions. OK, there was a question, is, is there a way to tell Launchpad that before you look at this one, you need to look at a different one? Yes, there is. And we'll get to that in just one second. So this is what the page looks like. It has the nice colored diff at the bottom. And this is the email I got in my inbox, which was sent from me. Um, now, the email address looks kind of cryptic, but it's the same on everyone. So I basically said, I was proposing merging my call branch into Drizzle. I've asked 
the Drizzle developers to review it. Here's what I added into my comment block, and the diff is attached at the bottom. Note, with a cool email client, you can actually see a colored diff in line, unlike some others. But this is Kmail. I use, I use uh, Kubuntu. So this is the email that you sent me. And we add a lot of useful email headers for doing filtering. Um, these are the Launchpad-specific email headers that are of use that came in this email. It told me that uh, the reason I got this is the Launchpad message written at Rationale, which is, why did you get this email? I got this email because I'm the owner. Um, it is a code review type email. It is associated with that branch, and it's associated with the Drizzle project. And using those combinations of headers, I can filter them remarkably easily into all sorts of folders. Um, except if you use Gmail, because Gmail doesn't allow you to sort on headers. Apparently, there's a bug, and if you go find a Google person, you can tell them, plus one from me. <laughs> now, those of you that were observant noticed there was an extra options section on that previous one where we get to propose for merge. And this is where I hid everything which you, most of the time, aren't going to set, um, but can if you want to. So this is where you, was this the question you were going to ask, Johnny? Uh, no, that's it. That, you can ask later. <laughs> so here we have the commit message. We can say, this is what I would like you to put into the commit message, because it's not necessarily you that's going to write the commit message, but later when you, this thing is merged. Um, this is who is you want to do the review. Um, review type has been a rather bit of a bane because we didn't really know what we wanted to do with it. It wasn't really a tag, and we're sort of kind of free text, and it, it's somewhat bastardized, and people use it in lots of different ways. Um, for now, you can just think of it as free text. You can write in anything you want, which may or may not impact how you claim reviews associated with the team. Um, and this is saying, yes, it's actually ready for review, and if I uncheck that, it will say that it's work in progress and it shouldn't show up on people's lists of say, review this, please. And this is the prerequisite branch, which is what Steve was asking before, is the way to tell Launchpad that you need to look at something else first. The prerequisite branch is saying, this piece of work is dependent on this other piece of work, and neither of them have landed, and please use that. And this is used to uh, determine the diff. So what it'll do is it'll take the, your target branch, it'll merge in the prerequisite, then it'll merge in this branch and only show you the difference between the prerequisite and your target. Now, here's a comment. This is very similar to the type of comment that I would get. Um, it's an awesome job, um, but you have copied a doc string. Can you please fix it? Um, I get that a lot. Um, so here we can do, this is, will just come, this will get added to an email that will get emailed out to everybody. This is uh, what this person thinks. You need to fix it. Um, and there are some other options in here. There's um, approve, disapprove. I think you should resubmit it because you've got it completely wrong, um, or please provide me a bit of information. Or you could just say, this is just a comment. I'm not actually providing a review. I'm just commenting. Now, so as the person getting code reviewed, you go, OK, I've got this email back. They told me I need to fix it. So I fix it. I commit. Um, and I push it back to Launchpad. Now what do I do? Well, what happens is the revisions that you've committed since you've started the review will actually be shown in line in the conversation. Um, and that's the next slide, so we can see that picture of that in a second. The um, machinery behind the scenes cranks out another diff because it knows that you have updated your branch, so we'll show you what it will now look like. Um, and at the moment, that doesn't send out any emails. And it, so I've got yet because it's something I mean to fix. Um, and one of the questions is sort of like, how do we now tell, since we don't send out an automated email, how do we tell all the reviewers that I've done what you've asked? Right now, we either add a comment to say, I've done what you asked, um, or we poke them on IRC and say, go look at it again. So this is an example of uh, one of my Launchpad branches, which is, this is just taken out of the middle of a conversation. There was something at the start um, where Stubb said, OK, fine, but now we've given you an official patch number, so I rename it, and then John came in and said, it's not what I'd really like, but it's incrementally improvement, so it's all good. Um, so we now see, so what we have here is anything blue is a hyperlink. So that'll actually take you to the branch, that'll take you to me, and that'll take you to actually see what the diff was on our code browsing system. Um, and if you're lucky, it'll be up. So 
one of the big things that we had is within Launchpad, we did all of our code reviews over email and wiki editing. Um, but we, as a team, wanted to continue following our workflow. And we knew that there were a lot of other ways of doing code reviews, but we had already had our standard workflow, and we'd like to keep it, even though we now have Launchpad showing us as well. So we wanted to make sure that we could continue just to use um, email to do all our code reviews, because if we didn't, uh, the rest of the team would shoot me. Um, so uh, that um, email address you saw, mp plus a number at code.launchpad.net, when you hit, when you reply, that's where it goes to. Um, it basically is then processed by Launchpad, which will take your email, create a comment that'll just as if you did it on the web user interface, and then send out the email to everybody. Um, the other useful thing is, just like the um, bug emailing stuff we have, you can also have a few extra commands that you can do inside email. And this is um, not documented as well as I'd like it. Um, it is documented, it's just hard to find. Um, so we have a way that you can, inside the email, you can also do a review, you can ask to add another reviewer to it, um, and you can change the status. So the comment's created and then emailed out to everybody. Okay, this has been a bit of a contention for some people. We say, well, a status versus a review, what's the difference? Because we had, at the top we had, you know, it's either work in progress or it's needs review or it can be approved. Um, but then you've got these people that are commenting on your code review. It's like, well, why do, why do we separate those out? Well, we have two different but related concepts. There is a proposal to merge where you're saying, this is the work that I've done that I'd like you to merge into trunk. So this is just saying, I want you to merge it. Now, you don't necessarily have to do a code review as, as part of this. Um, we have a plan to provide merge queues. Unfortunately, this plan has been around for several years, um, and half the code's there and half of it's not, but we keep getting pulled off for different priorities. But we will, in the very near future, for some definition of near, provide merge queues. Now, this will just be able to have an extra status that'll say, actually, this is queued up and you'll be able to go and have a look at the queue and, and take things off the front and land them. Um, and we'll have like automated programs. We use uh, PQM, which deals with the email, or Tarmac is another one, which actually talks to Launchpad at the moment already, but it just, just grabs approved merge proposals at the moment. So it'll just grab them, land them, push them up. Um, See, so the approval of a proposal is restricted to the person with right access to the target. So if me, as a normal person, proposes something to land in Drizzle Trunk, I don't have the right to approve that. The people that control landings into Drizzle Trunk can say yes or no. And so this allows us to, you know, partially restrict it, because when we, when we get to the stage of merge queues, we want everything to be automated. So once they've approved it, I can queue it up for landing, and the whole magic process just happens. Um, so we need to be able to restrict who can say yes, it's OK, or no, it's not. Whereas code reviews, Anybody can come along and say, I think this is cool, or I think you've done it wrong, um, or why did you do it this way? And anybody can offer their opinion and provide a review. Now, we have those who are in an unofficial capacity. Now, the definition of an unofficial capacity is effectively the person that doesn't have right permission on the target branch. So I could come into somebody else's Drizzle branch and comment on it and say, actually, this is a load of cack, and you should do it this way because it's cooler, and I would get a little community after my name in a review. Um, and I couldn't find a useful example of that, so I'm not going to show you one. But if you see it, that's what it means. Now, we, once you have all of these proposals and you have all these code reviews happening or being asked to happen, you need a way of tracking what you need to do. So we have what we call the active reviews page. So when you get on a project or a person or looking in through Launchpad at a list of branches, you'll see a link that says, there are 12 outstanding reviews or approved mergers. And what it'll take you to is this list. So this is an example for the Launchpad suite, and this page was actually about 10 times longer, and I used GIMP to cut out a whole pile. Um, actually, I cut out all the old ones, so you can't see how old ours are. Um, but this is, we have a number of different sections. We have these reviews are approved and ready to land, and these people haven't landed them. So if you get ones that have been approved and not landed, you need to slap them around and say, sort it out. Or you have someone that is responsible for taking those branches and actually landing them. Now here's the requested reviews I can do. So these are reviews where there has been a team requested to review it, and I'm a member of that team. 
Now, there's actually a section here that is missing, which is reviews I have to do. Those are reviews where I have been personally asked to review the branch. So they're, they're put into a separate table, but no one actually has asked me to do anything, which could be seen as good or bad. Um, now, here are reviews I'm waiting on. These are reviews which I've done, which or proposals that I've suggested that I want other people to look at. And I'm, they have not yet been approved, so they're just sitting here. Um, these are reviews I'm doing, so another section separate. And then there's a whole chunk of ones which uh, other reviews which other people are doing for other people, and really I don't want to waste my time on those. So that's, we had this on um, projects and project groups. This is actually from the project group one, um, like the overarching project where we have a number of related ones. Or we could have, this is my personal review page. Um, so these are my active reviews. These are the ones which actually I just care about, um, unless I'm actually supposed to be reviewing all of Launchpad's branches. So these are all the ones I'm waiting on. So I've got two Launchpad branches and two Drizzle branches, which got whacked up yesterday. And then I've got this other review I'm doing. So the Drizzle developers actually use this as their main focus. They, the only thing they look at is these pages for code reviews. They don't look at anything else. And if they, people give them patches on, on bugs, they will say, nope, put it in the branch, propose it for merging. That's the only way they accept code. It's the only way the code gets into Launchpad as well. Um, and it works pretty well for us. So what we have here is um, what's coming up. And this is uh, for RSN means real soon now, which can mean never, or it could mean like next week or next month. So these are things which I have planned, um, which I may or may not get time to fix anytime soon. Um, at the moment, when we generate new diffs, when you've pushed things, we aren't producing emails. I think it would be a good idea to produce an email, but then it's like, well, what do you stick in it? Do we put in just the changes? Do we put in the entire diff? Do we put in both? Uh, we were going to do an interdiff, yeah. It could, but we could do it really cool, and then it would look nice. So I'm, I think we're probably going to end up doing a combination, but I'm not yet sure. And since I don't yet know, I haven't done it. Um, the other one I want to do is split out review status from, from merge status, because we only have one status at the moment. But um, it's actually kind of interesting to know, historically, if you had a review that had been rejected that somebody else merged. At the moment, if we have only statuses merged, then we've sort of lost the the idea that someone actually rejected it. And if someone has merged a rejected patch, there are questions to be asked. Um, so at the moment, we're sort of losing that information. I'd like to split it out. Um, merge queues have been mostly in the tree for almost two years. Um, we're just missing a UI. Um, and we all know that's the easiest bit to add. So you know. um, there's a I, I want to have a land it button. Because at the moment, um, when it's been approved, you have to most of the people will have the target branch locally, but you have to grab the target, you have to merge in the source, commit it, and then push it back to Launchpad. Launchpad has all that information. It has the approvals. It has the commit message. It should be able to do it, right? OK, well, that's my thinking. Um, so I'd like a land it button, and I'd like it to just do the right thing. Um, patches and foreign formats. Um, some people choose to host their projects in different revision control systems, whether they be Subversion, Git, Mercurial, or Heaven Help us CVS. Um, so it would be useful to, if we have an import branch, like from CouchDB, um, and someone is hacking on it in Bazaar and producing a patch and doing a code review, we would like to have it so those changes are provided in a patch of meaningful way that they can grab that and merge it into their system, like providing a git patch thing, whatever they call it. And they can just grab that, merge it in, commit, and that has the useful information for the code that was done. Um, also, some people, for some strange reason, will fix bugs and just attach a patch file to the bug number. Um, and for us, that's not particularly useful. So we'd like to have it automatically create a branch for it, merge the patch, and hopefully cleanly, and if not, we can complain at them, um, and turn that into a branch and propose it for merging easily so we can then push it through our whole process. I, I don't know yet. The question was, will it be automatic? Um, we have thousands of bugs with thousands of patches already in Launchpad. So we'd have to work out what we do with those as well. Um, I would like it to be automatic. Um, but again, this is still very vaporware. We need to work out what we're going to do with it. But these are some of the things which I'd like to do. So I did tell someone that I was going to put a pony picture in. 
Um, and this morning I realized I'd forgotten a pony picture, and the only place I could think to put it was on the last slide. Um, this is a cool stormtrooper, my little pony. <laughs> it, in case you didn't get it, but I thought that was so cool. So, does anyone have any questions? Did you wait for the mic? Last time I looked at Launchpad, um, it didn't do automatic bug highlighting and crossing out like Bugzilla does, and that's a really useful feature. Sorry, uh, what are you wanting it to do? Um, okay, so if you reference a bug number in, in like the text of the Launchpad entry in the web UI, it, and someone goes and updates that bug you've referenced in the text, if it's updated or, stri uh, or, or it's been landed, I suppose, in your guys' terminology, um, it'll get striked out, or it'll automatically hyperlink the bug. That's really useful. Okay, have you filed a bug? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's a bug that it doesn't do what you want, right? Yep. So what happens to the separate patches in a, a, a branch uh, during a merge proposal? Are they all put into the one diff, or do you get them in separate steps for a proposed merge? At the moment, we only keep one diff around. So which is just the latest diff of what the current branch, what it would look like if what its current state is, is merged into the branch you've asked for. So at the moment, we're not keeping any of the others. Um, it, it was an interesting thing that we talked about because if you're reading through the conversation historically and you're, going, you're saying, oh, this piece is wrong, please go and fix it, and someone's looking historically and they go, oh, the diff doesn't have that, it's, it's, you can assume that the that they actually went and fixed it. But it would, one of the things we thought about was perhaps we should keep the diff around and then have a little footer on the side well, this was actually proposed on an earlier version of the diff, so you can click here to see what they were actually talking about, um, just to show that it has moved on. Um, but at the moment, we don't keep it, um, and I think it would, be, it would be useful too. But again, it's another change. I'd like to have it. I'd like it to be awesome. Anyone else? You did have a question before, Jono. Did I answer it, or are you just heckling? No, I was just wondering how you stand there a little while without the phone. Do as I say, not as I do. This is what I tell my children, too. Aaron? to this one here. Um, okay, there, there are two reasons. Um, one is we don't have any automated approval system. Um, that is, I will not get into that, it still causes me tears. Um, well, secondly, it's just the person that has reviewed the code and said it's all good um, didn't change the status to say approved from needs review. So, I mean, I could have done that, but you know, I'm lazy too. So. This is, uh, see, actually that one shouldn't be there, and that one shouldn't be there, and probably those two probably shouldn't be there. And they should all be up in the top block where it's all approved. Um, but it's not. Uh, this, is, this is the reason we don't do it automatically, because it depends. On project to project basis, uh, like in the Bazaar project, they need two core developers to approve. Now, if the person that submitted it was a core developer, they only need one. So. In Launchpad, we only need one, unless you touch the database, in which case Stubb and John I need to approve it, or you do a UI, you're changing the user interface, in which case someone else needs to approve it, so you might need four. So it depends on project to project. Some projects have two levels of review. You have to get past the first review, and then they have the person that reviews that review. So since we didn't want to impose our policies on anybody, uh, we decided not to impose anything. But the one thing which I didn't mention is everything that we have through here, or almost everything, is accessible through Launchpad Lib, which is the Python API, which I noticed Leonard today or the other day sent out an email saying you can now do anonymously. So you don't need a Launchpad login to query it with Python. Um, but yeah, so there is a way you could have it for your project to programmatically go through and change the status if they have the appropriate approvals. But we didn't impose it on anybody. 
Anything else? question is, what would we say to the, the comment that we don't do code reviews because they take too long? Is that right? Um, I would say that it would be very close to the people that say, I'm doing it the quick and dirty way because it's faster. The quick and dirty way of fixing a problem is almost never quicker. It's always dirtier, but it's almost never quicker. And I found that that despite the overhead that we have with code reviews in the Launchpad team, um, it produces high quality code. Um, it does catch bugs, it does catch issues, and it means that we are producing better code. We're not producing perfect code because you know, we still make mistakes, but it's better than if we could just you know, trawl on, fix something, commit, fix something else, commit, and not have someone looking at it. Um, so I think you're kidding yourself if you think that it's going to save you time not to review. Jono? Yes. So the comment was it makes, it makes both the reviewer and the reviewee better coders. Chris? Ah, okay. I didn't show that in any of my examples, but you can link a branch to a bug. Um, you can do it one of two ways. You can use well, you can use the web user interface, you can use the API, or we have a way of um, at the bizarre command line of linking a revision to a bug to say this fixes this bug. And um, there is a place on the merge proposal page and on the branch page where it will show you the associated bugs. But I just didn't have it in these slides. There was another question somewhere. Okay, well this is, this sort of comes back into how I'd like things to work versus how they work now. Um, inside the Launchpad team, we don't need things to be approved in order for us to land it. Um, we need someone to have reviewed it and said it's good, but the merge proposal itself doesn't have to be approved. I'll just come and basically say, okay, land that, it'll be good. And, um, but we have, like uh, the Ubuntu One guys use Tarmac, which is this uh, script that'll that uses Launchpad, looks at Launchpad and says, ah, these are all the approved ones, I'm going to land those for you and push it back, right? The one thing we're wanting to do is, we're wanting to provide merge queues so that the idea of the approval state in this wonderful finite state machine in my head means that we can, once, the, once it's been approved, it's been approved by someone that has right access effectively and they're approving a particular revision. Then as a non privileged person with an approved review, I could queue that up and put it into their queuing system, which some robot's gonna grab, merge, land for me, run the test, do its thing. So it would be an intermediate step. Um, at the moment, it's an optional intermediate step that some people happen to use. Aaron? Anything else? Or are we all happy and done for the day? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tim. LCA 2010 uh, and uh, Fiasco Wines would like to give you this uh, lovely uh, bottle of Sat Blank. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.